Hi, I'm Pastor Elgin Morrison, pastor of the Verit Memorial AME Zion Church, New Haven, Connecticut. You're about to go into one of our Sunday morning services. I pray that the worship will be inspiring to you, that the word will be relevant to your life. Please enjoy. Certainly proud of, of what they are accomplishing in the kingdom of God, even as uh, children. Amen. Our children. I want to call your attention this morning to Mark chapter 10 as we are uh, wrapping up this month, the miracle series that we have been in since New Year's, uh, going and walking our way through the miracles of Jesus Christ. And uh, this month we'll be wrapping this up, and I'm, I'm happy about uh, the next series that is coming up for about a month or so. will be as we're dealing with uh, Back to Church Sunday as the kids are going back to school. What we're going to be dealing with is uh, relationships and family dynamics. And so uh, you don't want to miss that series. That's next month. So you want to make sure you're in church every Sunday next month. Amen as we'll be dealing with families and uh, as we're dealing with relationships and things of that matter. Um, but Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 46, we're going to begin the message here, and y'all come with me to Danbury. I'll finish it up there, all right? Yeah. Amen. Uh, then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Barnabas, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet, came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. I want to talk about faith to keep shouting. Faith to keep shouting. Pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house again, to have this chance to worship with our brothers and our sisters. We thank you, God, for your presence in this place, and we ask you now that your presence might show up in the power of your word. Give us a word, O oh God, that brings new life to our spirits, gives us direction for our day, lets us know that you are yet with us and you are still able. Give us such a word even now. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. A crowd of Passover pilgrims are with Jesus making their way outside the city of Jericho. They are on their way to the city of Jerusalem. And just outside of Jericho city, there was this great shout, this great cry for Jesus that is coming from two blind men who are sitting roadside begging for coins from those who are going in and coming out of the city of Jericho. That, that day their cry is so bothersome, their shout is so annoying that the Passover pilgrims try to silence them because of how loud they are getting and becoming. They're, they're desperate and the crowd seeks to silence these two blind men. We, we have the name of one of the blind beggars. Mark's gospel tells us his name is Bonimaeus. And scholars have suggested that Mark includes this blind man's name because he is the louder of the two blind men that were begging. People in the crowd tell them to stop shouting. And it's clear what they are shouting. These, these blind men are trying to get the attention of Jesus because they believe that Jesus is able to give them their sight back. And, and they cannot see, but they sense in this crowd's excitement. They, they sensed it was at its peak. And so that must mean that Jesus has gotten as close to their roadside spot as he could. And so, so they start shouting out as loud as they can, Jesus, son of David, 
have mercy on us. And Bartimaeus must have been real loud because Mark includes him in his gospel and the other gospel writers just tell us that there are two blind men there, but Mark lists him by name. And I was studying this text and, and it's worth mentioning today where this blind man is situated. You, you need to recognize that Bartimaeus is situated and he is sitting outside of Jericho. Jericho is this old city. In, in the time of this text, Jericho is known for its beauty and its fragrance. In Jericho, there is an abundance of different kinds of honeys. And, and Jericho is full of the spicy aromas of cypress and the sweet smelling aroma of, of roses. And when you enter Jericho, you knew that you were entering into a place of pleasant fragrance and aesthetic beauty. And, and yet, notice stationed and even stuck roadside in the place of pleasant fragrance, there is this stench that is a reminder of human suffering. I mean, Jericho, the location of aesthetic beauty, there, there is the visible reality of human hurt as well as disappointment. It, it reminds us that we can be in a good spot and yet never experience any goodness in the spot we're in. You can be in a good spot and yet become stuck and roadside only watching others experience what you wish that you could enjoy because you are not able to move. There, there's a lot of people I came to church to tell you who are stuck at Jericho and, and because uh, misery loves company, I came to tell you a lot of folk come to church right now who are situated and stuck outside of some Jericho. And, and what Bartimaeus ignites in all of us is this underdeveloped ethic that, that we all have to have if we are going to grow in our relationships with Christ. When, when this crowd that's following Jesus hears the annoying and bothersome cry of Bonimaeus, they, they don't want to stop to become actively involved in his pain. They, they don't want to make any attempt to assist in the restoration of his sight. They, they want Bonimaeus to be silent. They, they, while they and their enthusiasm continue to follow Jesus, they, they want him to sit there and hush. They, they don't want to be distracted or delayed from following Jesus. They, they don't want Jesus to be diverted into taking his time to heal somebody who really needs to be healed. They don't want Jesus to stop walking with them so that he can minister to him. They, they try to silence blind Bartimaeus because his cry, his shout is bothering them. And Bartimaeus is determined. He says that Jesus will not pass him by without him at least trying to get his attention. Bartimaeus figures if, if the crowd around Jesus can hear him cry, then he's going to keep on crying because if the crowd can hear him, that means that Jesus can also hear him. Man. And, and the crowd doesn't bother him at all. And the crowd tells Bonamaeus, Bonamaeus, you sit here and hush. Bonamaeus, you sit here and be quiet. You stop shouting. Bonamaeus shouts even louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And notice it is this second cry that gets the attention of Jesus. Jesus stops when he hears him cry and he calls for him and he heals him. Bartimaeus was determined that he would not be denied an opportunity to be heard by Jesus. And I am convinced today that this is the ethic that we all need in our lives. We need to develop the determination if we're going to achieve our spiritual and natural goals in life just like Bonnie Mayers. We need this ethic if we're going to become who and what God has intended for us to be. If we're to overcome obstacles and roadblocks that have been between our blindness and our vision, we need what Bonnie Mayers had. We need to live with a conviction that says, I will not be denied. I will not be deprived of my opportunity to get my sight back. If we're going to live through past experiences that have scarred us and hurt us and disappointed us, then we need a Bartimaeus work ethic. If we're determined to fight for what's ours, to fight for our marriage, to fight for our children, to fight for our community, we need a Bartimaeus ethic. If we're determined that the enemy is not just going to walk in here and destroy what we've worked for, what we've committed ourselves to and sacrificed for, then somewhere along the pit bill pilgrimage in the middle of our journey, we're going to have to say, in spite of what happened, and in spite of where it left us, and in spite of who is around us, we will not stop, we will not be stopped, we will not be silent about what we need from the Lord. And see, what bothers me about us is that no matter how many scriptures we quote, or songs we sing, or titles we carry, 
tired. We, we get so emotionally and spiritually weak and strained when we are stuck with the struggles we had to face on yesterday or when we face some new opposition for today. Too many of us are living roadside stuck in the darkness that we become comfortable with. We are unable to see the potential that's in us that's crying out to be developed. Too many of us are roadside stuck and begging people who are fulfilling their dreams and we want them to stop fulfilling their dreams so that we can just survive another day with some coins that they give us on the side of our roadside predicament. Too many of us are comfortable accepting life stuck at the roadside, blind and begging, depressed and bigger because we only smell the fragrance that we cannot enjoy because we cannot see. But this is the day that you become unstuck, that you get up from your roadside, that you stop begging others for what you can get yourself. You got to not let the devil steal your shout. And Jesus heals this brother because he heard in him the cry of a desperate man. He heard the cry of a man that said, something has got to change in my life. My question is really what motivated Bonamaze? What drove him to keep crying, to keep shouting, especially when everybody around him told him to be quiet? What energizes him after he has lived his whole life by the roadside begging? What, what motivates him to ask for more? In, what keeps him unsatisfied with a few coins in a cup when he really wants to receive his sight? Here's my point today, and I'm on roster field. Bonamaeus keeps shouting because he believes that Jesus will not discriminate against him. Bonamaeus is blind, but the boy got good sense. He knew that with all the people in that crowd, there was every kind of dysfunction in that crowd. There was every kind of disease in that crowd. There was every kind of mental scarring in that crowd. There was every kind of emotional bruising in that crowd. And Bonamaeus thinks if Jesus can let people follow him with all of these other dysfunctions, then I'm going to keep shouting and add my dysfunction to the list. Bonamaeus is blind, but my boy got good sense. He, he stuck, but thank God he wasn't stuck on stupid. He knew that he wasn't the only one with a problem. In fact, he wasn't the only blind person out there. He just had the good sense that if Jesus could hear him, then the Lord could heal him. You missed that. You missed it. If Jesus could hear you, then Jesus can heal you. If Jesus can hear you, then Jesus can help you. It doesn't matter who's trying to hinder you. It doesn't matter who's trying to stop you. If Jesus can hear you, Jesus can heal you. And so, Bartimaeus will not let some other folk in the crowd keep him from getting to Jesus. He knows that he is not the only depressed or blind person out there and the fact that, that they're telling him to sit down only motivates him to shout louder. So, 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 so Bonamaeus keeps crying because he believes that his cry counts to God. And, and I came by to tell somebody, don't you let other folk make you think that your shout is meaningless. Don't, don't you let other folk make you think that your prayer doesn't have as much weight and merit in God's eyes as theirs do. I came to tell you to keep crying, baby. Keep crying. As long as the Lord hears you, that's what matters. You got to keep on crying. Keep shouting. You got to believe that you concern, your concerns matter to God. And they cried, kept crying. Why, Pastor? Because he knew something about the crowd. He knew that people in that crowd were doing the same thing he was doing. Oh, yeah, they might not have did it right as he was coming out of the city, because the text picks up as they're coming out of the city. They they cried after Jesus while he was on his way in the city. They got. 
at him while he was doing work, while he was downtown of the city. They, they didn't cry as he was leaving. So, so the fact that they had already got what they needed, they, they thought, Bonamette, you sit down. You don't need anything. Now, don't you waste his time. Right? Even after they had cried, it, it was early, but they all needed something from the Lord. And that's why they were in that crowd in the first place. And sometimes, you know, we are the same way. You know, we all right as long as we get everything we need, but we don't want to take time for somebody else to get what they need. I'm looking at somebody tell me, I know that's right. And sometimes I want to add some saints that looking all funny and looking down their nose at how somebody else is acting in church and how they're crying and how they're shy. I want to ask them, have you been following Jesus so long that you forgot that you once were blind, you were busted, you were broke sitting by the roadside too? Have you been around here following for so long that you forgot that you ain't always had it like you have it right now? Have you been following for so long that you forgot that your stuff still stinks too? you forgot how desperate you were for the Lord and when you begin to cry out of your desperation you don't care who's around you you don't care what they say you're going to cry out because you need something from the Lord let me let me give you my point I'm through faith birth something in you what births faith in you is believing that Jesus is the Son of God. That God loves this world so much that he allowed his Son to be crucified so that all of us could claim the eternal promise of God in our lives. That's what births faith in us. What grows faith is God's word. When, when, when you come here and you hear the word of God, it is like God is this great gardener and he's planting seeds of promise and he's watering seeds of human expectation and he's pruning weeds of doubt out of your life that will choke and kill whatever he has planted in your life. What protects faith is the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God to accomplish whatever he planted and whatever he watered and whatever he promised in your life. The faithfulness of God to prune from your life the things that will choke and kill what he has planted and watered and promised in your life. And what gives you the courage to exercise your faith is believe that Jesus sees you as important. Look, look at somebody tell me I'm important to God. I'm, I'm important to God. Understand that the Lord will not discriminate against you because of your spiritual condition. Jesus does not discriminate because you've been stuck longer at the roadside than somebody else. Jesus does not discriminate because you blind in two eyes and they're only blind in one eye. What makes you ask Jesus for help is your belief that your cry counts to the Lord. What makes you pray when you get in trouble is belief that your concern matters to God. What makes you keep going to Jesus is your belief that he wants to hear about the things that are on your heart and I came by to tell you to keep on shouting keep crying out to God because he hears you when nobody else can hear you he can heal you when nobody else hears you he hears you when nothing else helps you you got to have faith to believe the Lord can and when you don't know what to do when you don't know which way to turn when you don't know what to feel anymore in your life you got to believe that you got faith in God and know that God can do something about it God doesn't even want just to hear something but he can do something some folks just want to hear about your trouble so they can find something to gossip on you about but the Lord is the only one that can do something about it so he can change your situation keep crying and I'm on the field right here I am proud father of a seven week old baby and my daughter Ava is the perfect example of this kind of faith I'm talking about. I'm in my office studying, working on my sermons, and, and I begin to hear a little whimper that's slightly louder than the music I have playing in the background as I'm studying and working on a sermon. And those whimpers will soon turn into her crying. And, and she doesn't know that I'm studying. She doesn't know what I'm doing. She doesn't know I got to stand here and preach three or four times a Sunday. She, she doesn't know that I'm trying to figure out some deep theological challenge that I see in the text. She doesn't know that I'm trying to extrapolate some spirit 
spiritual, biblical issue out of a text, and I really don't need to be disturbed that time. It's almost as if she knows that daddy doesn't mind. She knows that he will stop whatever he is doing to attend to her cry. Ava already knows that her father will stop what he's doing if I hear her cry. You done missed it already. I, I, I just came by to ask somebody, who told you to stop crying when your father is waiting to hear from you? Who told you to stop shouting when the Lord is waiting to hear your shout? You got to keep the, consider the lilies of the field. They don't talk. They don't spit. And yet your father watches over them. I came by to tell somebody, keep crying. Keep shouting. If you don't need nothing from the Lord, then you be quiet. If everything in your life is fine, you be quiet. But for the rest of us in here, if you need something from God, if you're blind in one eye and can't see out the other, you better cry as loud as you can. You better keep on shouting as much as you can. You got to say, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. Why don't others, thou art calling, do not pass me by. Don't let the devil steal your charge. Don't let the devil steal your praise. Don't let the devil steal your cry. Don't let the devil stop your shout. Don't you know there's deliverance in your dance? There's glory in your praise. There's salvation in your shout. Every time you praise him, he puts angels on the run. Every time you praise him, he inhabits the praises of his people. You better keep on dancing, keep on shouting, keep on crying until the Lord hears you and answers your prayer. Look at somebody tell me, I know that's right. Well, I pray that you enjoyed the message today. I pray that it touched your heart and your spirit, that it was relevant to your life. We would love to have you here at Verick Memorial Church. If you want to attend our services, please feel free to come by any Sunday morning at 7.30, 9.30, and 11.30 a.m. services. Our church is located at 242 Dixwell Avenue. We'd love to have you here at Verick. God bless.